everyone, my name is Tatiana and welcome to my kitchen. Today I want to show you how to make Russian pirushki and they're one of my favorite Russian snacks. You can find them throughout Russia and Ukraine, just about anywhere, filled with just about everything, with savory and sweet fillings. Today we're going to make a braised cabbage filling. It's one of my favorite fillings and when I post a recipe online, I'll post other recipes for other fillings as well. I want to start out with making a really nice and soft yeast dough. And that's the big secret to making perfect piroshki. You want a really nice soft dough that's not too sticky and it doesn't have too much flour in it. So to start off with, we're going to need a cup and a half of milk. And we're going to heat this up in the microwave until it's lukewarm and then we'll add the rest of the ingredients to it. So we have our warm milk, we're going to pour it into a large bowl. And then we're going to add one tablespoon of dry active yeast. And then to that, we're also gonna add half a tablespoon of sugar. I'm just gonna sprinkle it on top, and then we're gonna let it sit here for about two to three minutes so the yeast can dissolve. Okay, so now that we've let this yeast dissolve, we're gonna give it a quick whisk, and then we'll add some salt to it. And it's gonna be half a teaspoon of salt, And we're gonna add one egg. And then we're gonna add two tablespoons of olive oil. We're gonna whisk that all together and then we'll be start adding the flour. So as I mentioned before, the key to making perfect piroshki is a soft yeast dough. So when we start adding the flour, you wanna add it really gradually and watch the dough so it doesn't become too stiff. And I usually add about half a cup at a time, just whisk it in there until it's workable and you can turn it onto the work surface. I usually start off by whisking it and then when it becomes a little more pliable than I could work it with my hands. So I've been kneading this dough for about two to three minutes and you can see it's been coming together really nicely. It's nice and soft. Just sprinkle it occasionally with flour so it's not sticking to your hands. And when you're done kneading, just put it in a bowl, cover it with a towel, and then let it stand away from any drafts in a nice warm spot in the kitchen for about an hour until it rises and then we're gonna prepare the filling meanwhile. So now that we have our dough rising, we're gonna start working on our braised cabbage filling. And it's actually a really simple filling to make. What we need is two medium carrots. I already have them grated here. And then we're gonna dice one large onion. So next we're going to add one large bell pepper, we're going to dice it about the same size as the onion, and this is a good trick for cutting peppers. If you just cut them from the top down, you can remove the core just like that. We're gonna add about six to seven small white mushrooms. We're gonna dice them finely just as we did the peppers and the onions. And last but not least, we're gonna cut one small head of cabbage. And I usually start off, I cut off the top of it, chop that off, set this aside and just portion it just to make it easier for yourself. And we're just gonna shred it with our knife, just like this. See, and what you want is these small pieces. You don't want it to be too big, because then when you braise it, it's gonna be unevenly braised. Okay. 
So now that we have all our ingredients prepped and ready, we're gonna come to the stovetop. We wanna heat a large saute pan to about a medium heat, and then we're gonna add a couple tablespoons of light olive oil. Or I, I like to use canola oil too. That way it doesn't have a lot of flavor in it. Okay. Once it's heated, we're gonna add all these together. We're gonna add the carrots and the onions first. And we're gonna saute it for about five to six minutes. You want it nicely browned and reduced. Okay, and you can see this. This is browning really nicely and it's reducing. And it's time to add the rest of the ingredients. So we're gonna add the bell pepper and the mushroom in here too. And we're gonna continue to cook it at the same temperature. I cook it at about a medium. Give it a good stir. We're gonna cook it for about another five, six minutes, and then we'll transfer it to a different pot and add cabbage to it. So now that this has reduced nicely, you can see it's nicely browned. What we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this off the stove. And I have a large pot here that's ready. We're gonna dump the entire contents of this mixture in here. And we're gonna place all our cabbage in here as well. And then here is the seasoning for this. And I have a teaspoon of, of the following. I have ground black pepper, I have sea salt, I have seen seasoned salt, and then I also have garlic powder and paprika. And I'm just gonna sprinkle all this in here. So we're gonna give this a nice stir, combine all the ingredients together. We're gonna cover it with a lid and you wanna braise it for about 18 to 20 minutes until that cabbage gets really nice and tender. And also don't forget to taste it. You wanna make sure that the seasoning is right. All right, now comes the fun part, actually making the piroshki. And you can see here, I've put the filling back into a flat pan. It cools a lot faster this way and you don't have to wait. Remember, always try your food. Mm. This is so good and it's gonna taste even better once inside the piroshki. So I have this dough here. It's raised about double in size. I'm gonna go ahead and punch it down. And we're gonna lightly flour this work surface. All there. And we're gonna knead it lightly just to get all the air bubbles out of it. Okay, so next we're gonna portion this dough equally. I like to take a big knife, just cut it in half, and then work from there. Flour in each section. I like to knead it back into shape. Cut it again. And it depends on what size piroshki you want to make. It can be anywhere between 16 and 24 different pieces. Again and again. Okay, so next we're gonna go ahead and roll out the dough for the first piroshok. Right, keep your rolling pin well floured. Gonna roll it out to about six inches in diameter. All right. And then we're gonna place about two tablespoons of filling. I actually like to fill them more. I usually put about three tablespoons in there, if not four. There you go. Okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pull up the sides first. We're gonna pull them up to the top, pinch them there, and then we're gonna work our way down the side one way, and then the other way. All I'm doing is pinching the dough together, nice and firmly, and you wanna do it quickly so you don't get any of that filling on the seams. Okay, and then what you do is you pull up these sides just a little bit. Just pull them up as you work. Pull everything towards the top. Okay, just like that. And you see they're nicely shaped, okay? We're gonna set them aside and I make about three of them before I start frying them. Now, when you fry them, you don't want them to raise on the counter at all. You wanna put them directly into the hot oil. So here on the stove top, I have a small sauce pot and I have about four to six cups of canola oil and I heated this up to a low medium heat when I started putting together the piroshki. So I have three piroshki all ready to go. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put them seam side down first into the hot oil. 
careful not to burn yourself. Now the secret to making pirushki really nice and fluffy is to fry them at a low temperature and you want to turn them pretty frequently so that they turn nice and golden brown on all sides. And you'll see that they're starting to really fluff up and be nice and airy. And you don't want them to raise in the countertop, you want them to raise like this in the hot oil. All right, and these are all ready to be taken out. You can see their nice golden brown color evenly around. And I usually place them into a bowl lined with paper towels just to soak up some of that extra grease off of them. Okay, and let them cool at least 20 minutes, 15 minutes, because they are really hot inside. Now, if you prefer not to deep fry your piroshki, you can also pan fry them. I have about a medium sized pan and I added a couple tablespoons of oil in here. It's nice and heated. So you can put them seam side down into the pan, into the hot oil. And you're gonna prepare them the same way you did the ones that you deep fry them. You're gonna turn them frequently on each side until they're a nice golden brown color. All right, so our pirushki are all done. And here you can see this is a more classical, traditional shaped pirushok. They're deep fried. They're nice, round and fluffy, golden in color. And then here we have the pan fried ones. They're a little more flat, equally as delicious. It just depends on how much oil you wanna use. These definitely require a lot less oil. I prepared them in two different sizes. The larger ones I usually make for myself when I want to snack on something and then I usually make smaller size ones if I have guests coming over and I want to serve it with the soup or as an appetizer. You can find this recipe and others on my Facebook food page. It's called Tatiana's Everyday Food. Thank you so much for joining me here today and I hope to see you next time.